Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games and it is time for the Kaiserreich Kaiserreich Guide in, you know, Kaiserreich Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, I, as chosen by the patrons, I am finally going to be doing the guide on the German Empire, Willy II, the male Victoria, as it says right here, the ruler of Germany for almost 50 years at the t start of this game. So, little bit of context, because these sorts of things are important. Uh, Kaiserreich, if you didn't know already, is a mod that asks the question, what if Germany had won World War I? The point of departure in the lore is that in 1917, Kaiser Wilhelm decided not to renew unrestricted submarine warfare uh, in an effort to blockade the Union of Britain, and as a result, the United States never entered the war. Now, there were a lot of other things that happened, but the point here is that Germany managed to defeat France in 1919, and, while they, and then basically a stalemate ensued between them and Britain because Germany couldn't invade Britain, and Britain could not successfully attack Europe which Germany had secured and so eventually a peace with honor deal was signed now uh, I'm gonna keep going into a little bit more detail but let's take a look at what's going on here so as a result Germany still has Alsace, Alsace and Lorraine uh, but they also have a much bigger colonial empire so let's take a look at the bigger world out here so in 1925, Britain had a series of riots and eventually the syndicalists, as you can see here, ended up taking control of the government and the royal family under King George V fled to Canada. It was during this time that Germany began to seize several uh, English colonies ostensibly to protect them from syndicalism. So Germany has a pretty large colonial empire here. So you have Morocco over here. There is Madagascar. Oops. There's Madagascar. Deutsche Middle Africa is uh, existent of, over here underneath Goring, everybody's favorite Nazi in Kaiserreich. They own southern Yemen. The Suez Canal is underneath their control. They have Ceylon. They have Singapore. And... Um, Malaya here, so you know they have lots of access to rubber. They have Indochina. They have several areas along the Chinese coast. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, they own parts of New Guinea, and so on and so forth. And a lot of these places actually have brand new names. For example, Kaiser Wilhelm's Land is the name of uh, this area right here. Um, so the German influence in 1936 is virtually all-encompassing. They are definitely the strongest nation of the world. They are the uh, people who are in charge of the status quo. The world has been shaped by them, not by the allied powers in this version of the world. And there's other colonies and stuff that I haven't talked about. I mean, they have Crete, they have Malta, they got all sorts of places. Which leads me to talking about their national spirits. So. Uh, where was it there? Now, no longer do they have, uh, you see, I was bringing up the colonial stuff because they used to have the effect of um, colonial upkeep, which hurt them, but they have actually uh, recently changed up the German focus tree, and it actually is still not 100% done. I do want to say that right now. Uh, however, I believe that any sort of ch further changes that are going to be happening to the German focus tree are going to be uh, stuff that happens later on in the game so it's stuff that's gonna be way down here late and these are just introductory guides they're not meant to be completely comprehensive guides so that even even if there are more changes to the German focus tree in the future which there should be this guide should still be enough for you to go on unless there's a radical overhaul which I don't anticipate happening Anyway, getting back to the national spirits and stuff. So, uh, you are the victors of the First World War, and uh, as a result, you kind of get that effect that France does in the vanilla Hearts of Iron 4 game, where you have serious penalties to your land, naval, and air doctrine researches. Uh, there's ways to get rid of this, but not for a while. You also suffer from quenched militarism, which is a little bit strange uh, for, you know, Prussia, but... The whole idea is that because the First World War was so very costly, nobody wants to get into a conflict like that again. 
We were also receiving oil shipments from Romania down here. Uh, that dealing with that is got its own section of the focus tree now. And you are the leader of Middle Europa, which is the biggest faction in the world at the start. Uh, you are one of the th leader of one of the three main factions in the world because there's Middle Europa here. There is the Third International, headed by the Commune of France, and there is the Entente, led by Canada. Which so these are basically the losers of World War One who are angry. So. Uh, as the leader of Mill Europa, there are bonuses and things that you can get as a result of that later. Most of your allies are the, these Eastern European nations, which were carved out of Russia. So, White Ruthenia, the Kingdom of Ukraine, and so on. These belong to you. And there's many, many countries in the world that have the ability to join Middle Europa as well. Uh, also, the AOG, while technically not a member of Middle Europa, can become one. Uh, and that's its own thing. And honestly, I'm not going to talk about the AOG too much right here because there's going to be a Far East um, revamping down the line. So I'll save talking about the AOG and things in detail when when that China fix-up has happened, probably later this year. All right. Now, you are the strongest power in the world at the beginning, like I said, but... It's a very tentative position. You are very much dancing on the edge of the volcano because you have the syndicalists and the Third International just over your border, and they can also uh, quickly get several allies. You also are going to have problems keeping your own members of Middle Europa in Middle Europa. It's not as difficult as it used to be, but it, it you are going to encounter some problems. But before we get into events, I want to talk about all the stuff that we can understand at the beginning of the game first off research slots you have four very nice uh you know it's always good to have four uh but remember that your air doctrines and your land doctrines and stuff are going to cost extra for example let's say you want to take a land doctrine here the base cost is 300 but it's going to take you almost 500 days to research any of these because of that victors of the Weltkrieg uh, effect. So keep that in mind whenever you're looking at uh, what things it is that you want to research. Although you do have electronic engineering completed, which I always like to see that. It always makes me happy. You have all the 1936 planes except for the heavy fighters, which you probably won't be using because it's in Europe. Your navy is relatively up to date, not so much with the battleships or the carriers, but there's things that you can do to make them better. And uh, you also start with anti-air equipment as well as heavy tank one and light tank one. And you also have engineers and recon units as well as infantry equipment one, mountaineers and marines. So you're, you're a pretty advanced country as Germany. Moving on to civilian factories, you have 52 at the start. A lot of them are being taken up by consumer goods due to a combination of your civilian factories and your ministers. Uh, you may or may not hang on to these ministers for a while. Military factories, you do have an awful lot. You have 24, so you can, and, and you do have access to all sorts of technologies, so you can do a lot with those factories, and you're definitely in a position where you can make more relatively quick, as long as there's not some sort of, you know, economic disaster. And as far as your divisions go, you have 88, and I believe every single one of them is at least a trained regular. Yes, so it's not, it's a pretty decently sized army, and they all have experience. In fact, you have some veterans here so there's a level five one there you got a motorized guy here who's uh pretty seasoned you know the the these the first second and third infantry guard divisions those are all good you also have if you take a look here lots of infantry templates to play with as well now your units are a little bit scattered for example over here uh the suez canal you have a garrison unit you have some more down here near uh you know, Somalia, uh, you've got people over here in Morocco, you've got some over in Ceylon, so you, you are going to have to spend a little bit of time kind of organizing your army, uh, deciding what you may want to do. Remember, though, that you have access to even more forces, particularly from the AOG. Now, remember, the AOG is a part of China, so look at this. They're on volunteer only, and yet they have almost 2 million manpower to draw upon. So if you just want more meat for the grinder, you can easily request some more forces from them and there you go you're looking even better see as you can see most of them are also regulars although remember you can't modify their units but if you need manpower the AOG is the way to go 
Uh, dockyards, you also have about 20, which is good. You have a large navy at the start of the game, particularly this reserve naval force up here. Uh, nearby, uh, oh geez, what is this fucking city called again? Kiel, yeah, Kiel. So in this navy, you know, you've got carriers, you've got your battle cruisers, battleships, heavy cruisers, all sorts of good stuff. Most of it, though, is out of date, as you can see here, and they're also very green. Still not a bad place to start. And you have plenty of admirals as well to choose from. Speaking of admirals, let's also look at what kind of generals that you have available to you. So you've got a few field marshals here, von Runestead, of course, as well as Mackensen, August von Mackensen. Also, if uh, you guys haven't seen already uh, in Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, Paradox is going to create an option where you can have this man be in charge as your national leader of Germany. They're going to completely redo Germany's focus tree and how it works. I'm very excited about it. And you have Crown Prince Wilhelm III, who has some gray hair at this age for some reason. And But yeah, you just basically have all the amazing German you know, generals that we've all come to know and love, such as von Manstein and Rommel and etc, etc, etc. Who doesn't love Kesselring? As far as your air forces goes, you know, it's pretty it's pretty good, mostly just tactical bombers and fighter planes. About half of these are your carrier fighter planes, but you know, you're in a good position. It's kind of like Germany. It's, it, it, it's if you want to be a big bad major power at the start of the game German Empire is certainly the way to go but it's been almost 10 minutes and we're still paused here so let's take a look at the national focus tree so it's very very big as you could already tell uh, but you can't actually do everything yet for example the aftermath of Black Monday well what the hell is Black Monday well let's find out but at the beginning of the game, you have several things that you could do. Okay, so this is just the constitution of the Kaiser Reich. Don't even worry about that. There's a few things that you can do here. For example, you could take imperial restructuring if you want to get some quick political power. I'm not saying that's the best thing to do, but uh, I would never, I would never tell you guys what things that you should 100% do. But I'm just kind of giving you ideas. So imperial restructuring could be a popular one because you're going to get 100 political power at the start, and this also leads directly with uh, into uh, the organizing the youth which will remove your national spirit the quenched militarism here which uh, will let your divisions recover better and you're gonna have more people available to uh, conscript into your army uh, so you're in a position where you can take this as soon as you want in fact I should also talk about what the rest of these do alright so you're getting the profits from the legation cities this is something that many of the major countries get whoa 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 Okay. Don't worry about what I'm clicking here. So it Black Monday is hit, right? Well, actually, first one thing at a time. Sorry, it's a big country. There's a lot to talk about. In fact, I am gonna call it right now. This this video is gonna probably end up being like an hour long. So the legation cities are over here in East China. You know, I'm sure you've heard of them. You've heard about how you can get Jiang Qing, Mao Zedong's fourth wife, in control. Something, something. Hearts of Iron Four milfs. Um, or waifus, whatever. But the important thing here is that they give you profit, and that profit shouldn't go away most of the time. Now, Black Monday hits you. Black Monday is when the German stock market crashes. This is their world's equivalent of the Great Depression hitting, although the United States was already suffering from the Great Depression. But because Germany has become the major power around which finances and all sorts of things rotate, almost every non-syndicalist country is getting hit by Black Monday. In your case, this lowers your national unity, your production efficiency cap, your factory output and construction speed are both halved, and you're sending 40% less resources to market. You then have the run on the banks. Uh, you can do anything you want here, and Black Monday will come to an end. It just depends on what is important to you. Uh, so, I, But no matter what happens, you're going to bring Black Monday to an end. But there's going to be some bad things happening here. You now have seriously negative political power to deal with and uh, anybody who's played Kaiserreich knows that political power is king you need it for a lot of things and you've now completely run out of manpower because of that quenched militarism now eventually Black Month week is going to come to an end and it is time to figure out what to do with it and you can now there's just so many things you can now deal with the aftermath of Black Monday now I'm not gonna go over every single one of these events that pop up like I've said um, so but you have things here where you can decide if you want to help out your colonies uh, in various ways. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and tighten our belts because we're already deep enough in the hole. The AOG 
can deal, you know, take care of itself, even though they're kind of dependent on us. More downfalls in stability. You also have the agricultural crisis in Middle Europa. So this is stuff that's going on in Eastern and the East. You know, you can just protect your own peasants or you could promise help. These kind of things could help with them not leaving Middle Europa. We're just going to say, let's protect our own peasants. And you see, I'm taking the things that are giving me more political power. And yet I'm still 126 in the hole, 166 in the hole, pardon me. Now, as Germany, you typically want to get rid of Black Monday as soon as you possibly can because of the severity of its effects. So after this, which one is this? Yeah, this is Deutsche Middle Africa stuff. Don't worry about it. So usually the first thing you want to do is do the aftermath of Black Monday. So I'm going to let it run while I talk about this other stuff. So uh, let's move away from the politics and from Black Monday and take a look at the other things that are going on in uh, your country. Oh, well, you see, first thing, the FAUD, you can decide to crack down on the um, basically the syndicalists, alleged syndicalists that are uh, operating here in Germany. And you can choose to jail the leaders. This will cost you 100 political power or you can let them operate openly and you'll lose 150 political power. So you're probably going to want to take the one where um, you lose less political power. But the thing is, the Commune of France is going to get the event Germany bans the FAUD. And uh, so let's see what happens if you do that. Okay, so what I have done now is I have cracked down on the FAUD and France was going to get an event to uh, potentially go to war with it. So they haven't decided not to go to war with me. And they probably won't. And if they did, it would be bad for them. Because as you can see, they only have at most 70 divisions available here. And you are pretty good as far as your um, logistics go. If France decided to go to war with you this early, they probably would lose. Particularly if you spent the time. Obviously, I'm not doing it because I'm. A, it's a guide. Um, but they're, they're, they, if you have your men on this border and it's this early in the game, nobody has had a chance to leave Middle Europa yet, you should have very little trouble crushing the Commune of France. So banning the FAUD is something you're probably going to want to do. All right, so you got uh, unrest in the Rhineland. As you can see, it's really rough for you as Germany. So as I was saying, let's take a look at the eco economic stuff that you have available here. So you can take the state of the economy, which gives you political power. Uh, you know, uh, all these things give you bonuses. And by taking the state of the economy, you're going to open up a few things. Now, this can be confusing because of the way that this tree is actually designed. For example, reactivating the Ludendorff line uh, requires you to complete the focus Reichsarbeitdienst. <sighs> okay, it's it's hard. I'm working. I'm working on my German. Definitely working on it. But, like, you know, you look here, where is that focus? It's not directly above it. So, you know, these things can be confusing. But if you so choose, you want to take the, you could take the state of the economy, and down here is just like your research stuff. So you can get your fifth research slot here, and then you can eventually create the Kaiser Wilhelm Society, in which all the people in your faction create that, uh, you know, scientific cooperation thing that you can do in factions. You also could eventually get uh, one nuclear, one rocket, and one electronics bonus down here. Uh, the investment in the IG Farben upgrades one of your companies. So let's take a look at this here. The increased activity of the suffragist movement. This is something that a lot of the major powers can get uh, regarding the rights of women. You can choose to support women's suffrage, which will cost you political power. You can promise something or you can say, they, don't they have enough already? But even if you take they have enough already, you're still losing political power. Uh, but these sorts of things can eventually lead to this uh, women's suffrage focus. But honestly, there's just there's just no real good reason to go down this section of your uh, focus tree. There just honestly is not, at least not at this point in time. Uh, maybe after the stability system is reworked uh, in Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4 and national unity has uh, larger effects on how your country operates, these could be better. But right now, not so much. So the aftermath of Black Monday has hit. You can choose to either bail out the Junker estates, which will cost you 50 political power, or you can liquidate the unprofitable mistakes, uh, estates, which will make you lose several civilian factories. Totally up to you which you consider better. This also will open up to you the Reichsarbeitdienst, uh, which is going to just 
lower the effects, meaning make less bad the effects of Black Monday. Also, uh, you're like, if you might be thinking, wait a minute, didn't Conquering History Games already mispronounce that word? Yes, I did. That is the one that you have to take to um, reactivate the Ludendorff line, which is basically the equivalent of the Maginot line, or uh, perhaps the West Wall would be the better term to use, but create forts here along the border with France. Now, you don't have to take this focus to activate this. However, you will be restricted uh, because the only other way you can do it is if you're at war or there's more than 50% world tension. So it's a, if it's a timing thing for you, maybe you want to grab this. This also will lead to the sale of Ceylon over here. You can sell this to the Princely Federation. I've never heard of them refusing it, although I think technically they can. Never heard of them doing it. Uh, and it could be a way to endear yourself to the Princely Federation, and maybe you could want to invest in them. Uh, although... You see, while they technically can ally with uh, Germany, it's rare that the AI will go down that path. Maybe if you want to help out somebody in multiplayer, you could do that. Now to the right, if you bail out the Junker Estates, you can then do the Intervention Program, which again just reduces the effects of Black Monday. Compare and contrast these two on your own time. They are practically the same, although this helps your factory output a little bit more, uh, but this takes less time. You can then approach Poland, so getting a deal here could be good for getting Poland to enter Mill Europa, which can be good not so much because Poland is strong, but because that means if you're fighting France, Poland is probably not going to stab you in the back. Probably. And then no matter which you take, you can get Cancellor in the radio, which gives you 100 more political power. Now, after you've gone down this, which is now faster than ever, this it used to take much longer to uh, deal with Black Monday, a couple of Focus Tree versions ago. You can then finish the Black Monday reforms and everything's going to be better. And this can eventually lead into the one currency for Middle Europa, which will modify literal, your leader of Middle Europa trade by giving you additional factory output. Uh, so it's relatively quick to get rid of Black Monday. In fact, let's just go ahead and get started on that now. The Kaiser Bund does not exist anymore, you may have noticed. Uh, the Cretan question. So yeah, this is this is something, an, an event just uh, about, you know, you're trying to stabilize again. So what are you going to do about Crete? You can give it to the Greeks, you can give it to the Ottomans. Well, you could offer it to them. There's no guarantee they will do it. Or you could choose to keep it and it'll cost you 50 political power. So just as an example, let's offer it to the Greeks, because in my experience, sometimes the Greeks won't take it. Uh, all right, let's let's keep this going. Uh, are we gonna get a pop up? There we go. Uh, they have actually agreed to take it. So, all right, you become the. I mean, Greece owns Crete, and you get some political power as a result. Cool. The strikers are done striking. The that that national spirit negative is gone. All right, now, yet another new event that happens here because of 0 0.5, the DAKEB and approaching bankruptcy. So this has to do with um, the railway, which the idea was that it was gonna go, it was transporting resources in Africa. Uh, so it's, it's getting close to bankruptcy, so you could choose to pay political power to keep it going, or you can sell it. So if you sell it, that has to do with um, how Absinia's uh, focus tree goes. So let's just say we're gonna sell it. All right, Liberia is also asking for aid. This has to do with like getting different people on your side and stuff. So you could help them for 50 political power. You can say they're on their own. I'm just gonna say they're on their own because damn it, if I don't think that Liberia is not gonna exactly be in a position to help me against the commune of France. Um, now, your ideology has grown. This gets into politics. We're just going to say we don't need this right now, but there's no nothing that says you have to remain authoritarian Democrat. That goes into the political part of the tree. Let's go back to looking at what's going on over here, though, in your industrial part of the tree. So you have three options here uh, as far as like when you want to go into building factories and stuff. Subsidies for Semyons, uh, the Friedrich Krupp AG company, and the contracts with Mauser. Also, I I'm not I'm not talking about the dates of every single focus here, but when you are figuring out what you want to take and when you want to take it, keep in mind how long it does take to actually do these things. Jeez, ethnic conflict in Sri Lanka. Another reason why you should sell Ceylon. Uh, 
So these are mutually exclusive with one another, and then uh, this determines which paths you can go down. So for example, if you decide to do the contracts with Mowers, uh, you cannot get the new locomotives which give you additional infrastructure. On the other hand, the zips here, that's these two, the artillery research is these two, new weapons is just contracts with Mowers, and eventually you can invest in some Panzer factories if you go down this way, which is really great because you have minus 10% production cost for a year at the cost of 40 political power. So maybe it's not amazing, but depending on when you decide to invest in this, you can really crank up your production. And eventually you can come down here and get the economic boom. So by this point, Black Monday is a distant memory and you just get a bunch of production efficiency, cab, more factory output, and you lower your consumer goods factories for a year. All right, moving over here to the line, the reactivating of the line is pretty obvious stuff. You're just building more forts. Now this does add forts. It does not set a fort number. So if you want to build more forts along the border with France and then um, do this on top of it, that might not be a bad idea if you're into that sort of thing. Citizens leaving for Baltic, this is just something that's going to regularly happen uh, between you and uh, the United Baltic Duchy. Military expansion. Well, wait, actually, we're about to get the focus pop up. Oh, man, this is a long one. There we go. Bailing out the Junker Estates. Keep moving down the line. All right, now. Military expansion. You've got two directions to go in for your military. You can either go with the Grand Battle Plan Doctrine focuses, or you could go with the A New Doctrine. So the new doctrine is for mobile warfare, but it has more specific requirements than the modern art of war. You have to either have Gudenrianth or Eric von Manstein as your chief of staff. So that would be down here. Right now, it's neither of those men. So let's take a look at what are the requirements there. Um, where's Manstein? There he is. So one of the following must be true. You have to be market liberal, social conservative, authoritarian, democrat, paternal, autocrat, or a national populist. So if you choose to become socially democratic, which is possible, you cannot take Manstein. Same thing with Guterian. They will not go any further to the left ideolo ideologically than market liberal. If you go further to the left than that, then they are not going to work for you. So when it comes to deciding what you want to do politically and with in terms of your army if you're working on this and you eventually want to become social democratic well then you better be researching grand battle plan doctrines in the meantime uh so this these both give you 50 percent research bonuses which is very good considering that you have to deal with the victors of the uh victors of the Weltkrieg. uh yeah, see, it's just more German citizens leaving. Now, they each have good effects below them. So, for example, Squad Tactics gives you two 50% research bonuses for support artillery. So, if you really focus on one line, you can get some serious soft attack going relatively early. But Armored Breakthrough is extremely good because it'll take away one of your ahead of time penalties. So, if you've seen my Austrian Empire video, you know I've talked about the effects of that. So, for example, this Tiger tank here would right now take 1,200 days, but it only has a base cost of 250 days. So, if you take away the ahead of time penalty, you can research that in less than a year after you have taken armored breakthrough uh, not to mention any sort of companies that you have take uh, gotten that reduce research time even more and they both get ahead of time bonus is on um, mechanized where it just completely reduces the ahead of time penalty so you can get armored stuff very quick uh, if you go down a new doctrine but if you do do grand battle plan which I think is a very very good land doctrine a severely underrated land doctrine you can get some armor in in your uh, divisions anyway through the use of mechanized militaristic uh, revival is actually impossible to take as long as you still have the quenched militarism so remember if you want to take if you want to get rid of that quenched militarism you have to go over here to organizing the youth let's approach Poland so we can talk about that uh, then the new textbooks, whoops, what does this matter from Africa? Relationships. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not going to go over the Portugal stuff. That'll be like for a Portugal day. All right, now, new textbooks is how you actually remove the national spirit victors of the Wildkrieg. So that's uh, 
So you may notice that you get your ahead of time research bonuses before you actually get rid of Victors of the Veiled Creek. Now you could choose to just get these and then take new textbooks. It's totally up to you. But I think I think what the developers were going for here is that you could research at least a couple land doctrines while you wait to get down here to new textbooks. And then you have your maneuvers and putting the syndicalists back in your place. You probably will not research these because this leads to you declaring war. Well, gaining a war goal on the Commune of France, but France is usually going to attack you first, so don't even worry about it. Now, Bretano's speech. This is something that happens after uh, you do the Polish thing. You get a little bit more political power, which is nice. So, this can then lead into this newer part of the focus tree. Uh, but let's just go ahead and finish the Black Monday reforms. Now, notice you do not have to finish the radio focus anymore like you used to. And incidentally, the stuff I'm doing, I'm not saying this is 100% ideal, the focus order that I'm going in. I'm just doing this to get rid of Black Monday so that we can do other things during this video. Okay. Air and Navy, or I mean Air. Let's talk about the Air first. You have two choices here. You can keep the Flager Troop, which leads to Battle uh, Support Doctrine. So that would be the center branch of your Air Doctrine. Right here. Or you could alternatively go with Strategic Destruction. If you like Operation Integrity, you might be playing... Operational Integrity, you might be playing as the wrong country. Uh, and then these just, you know, it's just your pretty standard stuff, giving you air bases and things like that. Although, interestingly enough, you can expand your Singapore airstrips if you have also been working on your navy. So this doesn't put airstrips in Germany. It puts them, whoops, it puts them over here in Singapore, right there. Which can be good if you want to defend your colonial empire, which I would imagine that Wilhelm II wants to do. So yeah, besides that, it's all pretty standard. Uh, down here, you get your Cult of Aviation, which reduces your production cost by 10%. And uh, you're just going to be spitting out those aces because you're getting a 200% ace generation chance. So if you went with this uh, and, you know, the ace generation increase for the um, via your air doctrine, you're going to have so many aces, you don't know what to do with them all. All right, it's election time, which I'm going to go over in a minute here. But first, let me finish talking about the Navy. So, actually, never mind. We're going to talk about elections now. Now, what you have to understand about the election is at this time, the German Empire is authoritarian democracy. But they do, so they do have a legislative body. They're not paternal autocrats. Uh, and the elections are happening for the, um, the, uh, the Reichstag, which is... Like, if you're American, it's their Congress, or, or like their Parliament, basically. So the you can have something where a coalition government is created with the social parties of Germany, so that would be the SDP and Realist FPZ. You could have the, uh, the Lion Roaring, a new gross coalition, uh, and then change who needs change, where you just stay authoritarian Democrat, and all of these will increase the popularity of whatever party you have created. So let's first take a look at the STP and Realist uh, FVP. Uh, and this leads to a new Reich's Chancellor. So right now you're under Franz von Papen. This is actually in our original timeline. This guy was one of the, uh, I believe the term was like the article... He was one of those chancellors that was appointed by um, Hindenburg when Hindenburg was basically running the country during the Weimar Republic. One of the predecessors to Hitler. Not that he was a Nazi, but I mean he was holding the office of chancellor before Hitler was. Uh, now you get to choose who you want here. You, again, you have a few options here and it determines who is going to be in control. This is, I would say this is actually more important than the actual election. The election just determines the popularity of, po of parties. So you could go with Otto... Uh, veils here the first SPD one and you become socially democratic so if you do not want to do, if you're not interested in mobile warfare maybe this is something that you want to do if you do want to get mobile warfare don't grab this and you get your new ministers down here uh, I leave it to you to actually read through them and determine what who gets what but let's look at, take a look at some of the other options you have available so this is an example of the new Reichschancellor uh, event that you'll get if you decide to have the market liberals become more popular. So uh, in this, if you go with Paul von Leto Vorbeck, the 
uh, NLP becomes the popular party, so you can get the market liberals. Uh, you could have him become in charge, but demand some concessions. So basically, you get different ministers. So like this gives you this is better if you want a navy, for example. But this will be better if you want more factory output. Uh, you can keep your current guy, you know, von Papen, or you could go with um, a current von Schleicher, the Kaiser True alternative. So this is something else entirely. This is where you're saying, screw democracy, I want to be a paternal autocrat. Now I gotta say, I think I've only ever seen Germany take this particular route once, but it is possible. Um, you can kind of understand why they do it, what well, with the whole only 5% political popularity at the start of it. So it could be very catastrophic. But let's say you don't want to change your political party. So in this example, I have made the authoritarian Democrats a little bit more popular, so another 52% popularity. And you could choose to either keep Papin, which gives you more um, political power, or you can go with some different uh, ministers. Again, read it on your own time, determine if you like them, or you can still become paternal autocrat. This option is always available to you. Uh, but let's just say that we, you know, Van, Von Papen's doing a good job. Let's just keep things kind of quote unquote normal here. Status quo, status quo all the way. So uh, we're almost done with the Black Monday reforms, and then I'm going to talk about how the Navy stuff works here. Now, uh, as you can see, if you're keeping the status quo, you do have all authoritarian democratic ministers. So this is something that can be appealing if you don't want to be dealing with paying political power to make your, uh, you know, have to hold off other parties from becoming more popular. Okay, we're done with that. So I want to talk about the Navy now. You can finish the 1934 Navy plan. Anybody who knows about Wilhelm II in our original timeline knows that he liked him some navies. Uh, so the finishing of the 1934 plan is how you start to create a really, really freaking big navy. This is just Ludendorff dying. Interesting lore, but this is in a lore video. Now once you're done with that, I'll talk about what happens when we get there, but uh, you then have a much bigger naval tree than normal. Well, of course, you first have your pretty standard, do you want to build submarines? Do you want to build capital ships decision to make here? But then you have abilities to create better naval bombers, make better carriers, uh, modernize your cruisers, fortify the coast. You don't want the Union of Britain, uh, you know, stomping its way through Hamburg or something, right? Creating additional bases, creating supply lines to Singapore. So this gives you a bunch of convoys. So really, there's no need to be building convoys, I, I think. All right, there's the programs. Uh, so basically, you're, you're splitting your time between Germany and your colonies. But let's talk about the 1934 Navy program. Uh, now, you are the strongest Navy in the world, but as it says here, Japan and the Commune of France are future enemies. The Commune of France typically doesn't really build a Navy, but the Union of Britain can be a problem. So can the Canadians. And the first decision that you have to make here is what do you want to focus on for the next few months? Battleships, carriers, destroyers, or U-boats? Now, this does not give a bonus in the sense of U-boat production costs minus 10% or anything like that. What it does is spawns them. So for example, if you choose battleships, and I'll, and I'll show the pop, pop up later when it happens, you will get additional um, battleships spawned for you that'll be ready for the war. And then every six months after you complete that focus, you will be getting that pop up. So it could be tempting to just make this the first thing that you complete before Black Monday hits so that you just get that adi those additional ships being cranked out. For example, the way I've been playing it, it's almost halfway through 1936 before I've completed this. You can get treaties with Ireland. Uh, that's a way to get uh, Middle Europa in there. And you can potentially, whoops, and you can potentially attack uh, Denmark. Though usually that's not going to happen. All right, now you might have been noticing I've been sending some material to some of the civil wars that are going on in the world. So let's take this time to talk about um, Middle Europa and who is going to join you. So it's mostly just Eastern Europe and your colonies, which is just you anyway. A lot of these can leave you. For example, Ukraine can go syndicalist. There could be nationalist coups in areas here in the east. Uh, as you could already see, uh, the Baltic duchies are, uh, the Baltic duchy is being torn up right now by Latvia and Estonia. I wouldn't worry about that too much because they'll usually just join you anyway. But on the other hand, they could end up joining uh, Russia if you're not careful. So you might want to help out the duchies, but it's not a big deal. 
Speaking of Russia, Russia can potentially also join you. And in fact, I see they have reinstated the Tsar. And in my personal experience, when they go with the Tsar, they will usually join you in Middle Europa. But we all know the laws of Hearts of Iron 4, uh, especially of Kaiserreich. If you're playing as Germany, nobody's going to join you. If you're playing as the Commune, everybody joins Germany. But they do have the ability to join Middle Europa either via Focus, although they'll usually do it much earlier than that, uh, what usually will happen is you will go to war with France, and if you con give concessions to Russia regarding the Caucasus, they will help you. But it's not 100% guaranteed, and I wouldn't plan on doing that. Uh, in fact, I would get ready to be attacked by Russia. Now, there are other countries that can also join Middle Europa. For example, the United States can join Middle Europa if they manage to survive. As you can see right here, they can join Germany. The American Union state technically cannot join you if you were to just look at their national focus tree. There's only the League of American States as far as factions go. However, there is an event where you can ask them to join you uh, if you're fighting the syndicalists, but I really would not count on that. And of course, the CSA is not going to do it. Uh, other factions, though, that can join Germany are potentially the Princely Federation, the Ching Can. Um, let's see, I'm trying to remember who else can do it. Uh, obviously none of the Entente countries. Indonesia and the Netherlands can join you, so can the Philippines. Uh, basically, if you're offering protection to people, you can get their help. Also, Austria could possibly help you out in the war against France, but again, I wouldn't count on it. They tend to just stay out of it, and by stay out of it, I mean that they will fund your enemies. The Spanish Republic could also potentially join you, and technically so can Portugal, but ever since the new 0 0.5 came, uh, patch came out, I haven't really seen them do it. But if for some reason Dutch Middle Africa and Portugal went to war and Portugal hasn't joined the Entente yet, you could very easily take over Portugal and then force them to join Middle Europa. All right, let's get this clock running. Uh, let's now talk about the political tree. First, let's also let's, uh, let's uh, go ahead and organize the youth here. Commune of France is threatening uh, Switzerland, so that's another way that you can go to war. We're just gonna we're just gonna pass it by right now, so we don't go to war with the commune because I'm explaining stuff. Now, uh, you have a couple of options here. You can embrace the uh, FAUD, which is possible if you have become social democrat, which we have in here. Uh, which you'll lose political power, but you gain factory output. So, I mean, that's kind of your call. You also have the Eastern Promises here, which is interesting because you can organize the youth and take Easter Promises, which will give you additional daily political power gain without having to embrace the FAUD. So these things are not mutually exclusive with one another. Uh, now, for the institution of the Verdeck Reichspolizen, uh, you need to have... Franz von Papen or von Schleier in as your head of the government. I swear I am going to he open up my Duolingo app after this to start refreshing up on my German. Uh, and banning of French organizations and stuff like this. These are things that you are kind of more authoritarian, but they don't necessarily stop you from um, from taking them if you're socially democratic dependent. Well, well except for this one. So what I think most people agree is the best way to go is to do the Christian trade union because uh, it does allow you more factory output, not as much as the FAUD, but you're also not losing political power. I'll talk about this guy in a minute. And you can eventually head down here to finalizing centralization, which replaces Easter promises. So you're trading political power for more factories. Uh, you could do the Bundesrat, uh, but there's... It's just more political power, and eventually you're going to start drowning in it. Now let's talk about Bertolt Brecht. This guy is interesting. Uh, as of 0 0.5, the way he works is he's uh, he's allowed to leave, and wherever you choose to send him, there will be um, divisions that spawn. So he's a syndicalist, so you can let him go to America, and if you do, you get political power, same as if you let him go to Spain. But wherever you send him, either the CSA or the CNT are going to get additional divisions. So you could be potentially helping them win. Or you can tell them to reconsider and uh, lose political power. So it's, it's just up to you. I'm going to send him to America because the CSA never wins the Civil War anymore because uh, they, got, they got way too nerfed. 
Uh, oh, yeah, I have to take the Easter promises. My bad. All right. Um, so that uh, basically sums up the political branch, except that you get the final reform for more political power. So let's talk now about this very bottom part of the focus tree. So this is the brand new stuff as of 0 0.5, and it's pretty cool. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is either going the Europa Rat or the Europa Commission. Both of these require you to have finished both of these focuses. For some reason, there's the check mark here, and it's also red here. I don't really understand why. But this leads to basically your foreign policy tree. So as Germany, you don't really have conquering focuses um, like you would in Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4. It's more like your relationship with other European nations. So for example, uh, you could, well, this is a bad example, actually. Burma is not in, um, is a uh, is not in Europe, but like you can invite Burma into the fold over here if uh, the Siamese Federation, which has been created right now, see, I'm telling you, Kaiserreich Law, like whatever's the bad things is going to happen to you. So if the Siamese Federation joins with Japan, you can tell Burma to join you because uh, their interests are threatened as well as yours. Because Germany has no friends, only interests. Uh, you could do things here like uh, create an alliance with. Uh, Poland or you can say that you want a border strip with them if you want to maybe go to war with them for some reason I mean it's totally up to you it's things with Bulgaria uh, integrating the border strip this would be the land right where is it it's lots so this is a uh, whoa so that would be geez what is going on with my mouse today where's lots right here yeah right here uh, you can integrate this into your country if you just want to turn Poland into a tiny little rump state. That's up to you. Uh, you can expand the Ostwall. So this is like naval, the, the stuff in the north. Okay, we're done with all that. In fact, let's, uh, whoa. Oh, yeah, you have these Jewish immigrants from Algeria. Right now, they don't really do anything except cost you political power. And maybe you can get a little bit of... Um, manpower but it's not very much i think there's eventually a plan to have the jews be able to create their own state or something like that but for right now it doesn't do anything okay now over here you could uh you could have some focuses that are going to have to do with um how you deal with austria presumably you're going to go to war with them or you could uh have them join your faction but right now they don't actually do anything in fact maybe i should just stop talking about this whole area of the focus tree all right, this is what I was really waiting for. Reviewing the 1934 Navy program. In 1934, we have begun a, long, a large naval construction plan, and the ships begun then are slowly being finished. However, with our naval industry still limited, we have to limit ourselves to one area of production, which we focus on in the next six months. So you can keep making battleships, or you could do other stuff. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, so every six months, you're going to get that pop-up. Because when did we finish that? In May? Yeah, it's been six months. All right, now let's talk about oil. Okay, so this is actually perfect. Romania is going through its civil war. We are still getting oil shipments from Romania. I should find something to. No, we're just not gonna. We're just not gonna research anything right now while this is going on. So after the First World War, basically Germany made a deal with Romania in which they said they were going to lease their oil fields for something like a hundred years. So until like twenty, yeah, until like twenty nineteen or something like that. So all of your oil needs come from Romania, but it is possible that an oil shortage could happen, and it should be happening shortly here. So right here, there is this effect nationalizing the oil industry. This can happen if uh, you haven't finished your Black Monday reforms as Germany, which is why I think it's important to do that as quickly as possible. Um, or if Germany has gone to war with the Commune of France. So basically they shut off your oil. This is where this new focus tree comes in, where the oil must flow. And what it basically comes down to is you're deciding, all right, I can't get oil from Romania, so I want to get it from somewhere else. So for example, you can get it from Venezuela, uh, which may or may not happen, and you may want to be careful about when you time it, because for example, we have socialist Venezuela down here right now, so if you made the deal with old Venezuela and then you have syndicalists running those things, you're going to be having a bad time. Mesopotamia leads to the Ottomans, to the Caucasus is like Azerbaijan, and you can remind the Romanians of their duty and potentially go to war and attack them. 
is that pretty much everything I think it is? Um, so, strengths and weaknesses of Germany. Well, you do begin in a good position as uh, basically the leader of the status quo, the leader of uh, Middle Europa. You do have your own little branch of China here, though I'm not going to talk about it. You might notice I didn't really talk about it too much, but you have a lot of manpower. You just have some bad national spirits that you have to deal with, particularly the victors of the Weltkrieg, as well as the quenched militarism. But you can get rid of those relatively quickly, depending on how militaristic you want to go. And as of 0.5, I really think that it is easier than ever to defeat the Commune of France and the Union of Britain. The only reason you should seriously be struggling is if you, just everybody begins to join the Third International, uh, such as Russia. Like if the Soviet Union gets created, you're, you might have a hard time about it. But the thing with Germany is you're only getting stronger as the game goes on. You have a very rough 1936, but you can get very strong very fast. Uh, who the hell is justifying on us? It's Iron Guard Romania, actually. Interesting. Uh, now, you do occasionally have to deal with revolts. For example, Ukraine or Lithuania. Basically, everybody here could potentially rise up against you. But the thing is, as long as they don't do it while you're at war with the Commune of France, it's very easy to crush them. And uh, the, the war with the Commune of France will usually happen... Oh, see, this is what I'm talking about, the oil. So, they're... Uh, there's a problem here. You can try to assassinate him, uh, Cordrianu. I've never seen it work. Maybe we'll get lucky right now. Come on, game. Make me a liar. Nothing's happening. Okay. Yeah, it failed. I've never seen it work, so don't even bother. Uh, anyway, back to the strengths. You do have a very big navy, and, and it can get much bigger. You can definitely create a death stack, which will sweep the, the seas clean of anything from the Union of Britain. And once you defeat the German, the the third international which usually that war will happen by like late 1939 at the latest before the commune declares on you oh uh speaking of wars with france uh then you are definitely the strongest power in the world easily able to puppet these two nations and then there's virtually no chance that the entente will be in any position to attack you and then you could build a navy and head over there the only thing that could maybe give you some trouble is if the combined syndicates of america end up uh winning the Civil War quickly and joining the Third International, just the sheer amount of industry and manpower that can come out of there could be, potentially be a problem, especially in a multiplayer game. But against the AI, the CSA like just almost never wins anymore, and uh, you should be able to run over the Commune and the Union of Britain pretty quickly. One last thing, this is another event that's not a national focus that could potentially cause you to go to war with France. So... Uh, you could lose political power if you don't take it, or you could stand up to those anarchists. So let's do that, just so we can take a look at some of the events that happen when you are at war with France. So elections will be suspended, so if you're hoping for elections to give you more political power, that's not going to be happening. Here we go, the Great Crusade. You get 100 political power and 100,000 manpower. So even if you're at 0% uh, uh, man, I mean zero manpower, at the start, you're going to get that 100,000. That should be enough to allow you to endure some casualties until you can think of something to deal with that. Uh, let's see. What are your... Okay, weaknesses. you got a target on your back because you're the strongest power in the world, basically. So that means everybody's going to want a piece of you. So it is totally possible that you could find yourself at war with not only France and Russia, but also Japan or the Qing. Especially after the rework. Who knows how aggressive Qing is going to be. And so that means you have to be thinking about your colonial empire out here. So maybe you've, you're thinking, okay, I'm just going to take all these Chinese men and I'm going to bring them over here to Germany and they're going to help defeat France because uh, we're just going to overwhelm them with numbers. Perfectly valid strategy. But if you do that, don't cry about it when Japan declares war on you and then makes naval invasions on these unguarded coastlines and they take Indochina and Malaya and AOG from you and the Fingtian gets bigger and, and you know, just don't cry about it if that happens. Because that is probably what will happen, just due to bad luck. Uh, I think that is quite enough for an introduction. Uh, well, I'm Conquering History Games. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Remember, if you become a Patreon at patreon.com slash conqueringhistory, you can vote on future Kaiserite guides and determine what sort of content is put out on this channel. So subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell so you're always notified whenever a new video goes up. And you have yourself... 
a wonderful day. Long live Wilhelm. <laughs>